In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a new bicycle chain. I'll start with removing the old chain since that's probably how most of you will be doing this. But if you're installing a chain on a bike that doesn't currently have one, this video will be helpful as well. Bicycle chains will stretch out as you use them. And if you wait too long to change your chain, you're going to have a stretch drivetrain as well, particularly the rear cassette. So I recommend changing your chain often. And I check my chain with something like this. This is a Park CC2 chain checker. Uh, on this particular device, when it gets to about 0.6 or 0.7, I go ahead and change out my chain. Here's what you'll need to do this service. The chain checker is obviously not required to actually do the service, but it is helpful to have on hand to let you know when it's time to change your chain. Obviously, you're going to need a, a new chain, and make sure when you get your chain, it's the right type of chain. So this is an 11-speed chain. Uh, usually, they're 9, 10, or 11 and just make sure you get the right one for your bike. And then you're going to need a chain tool, also called a chain breaker. A lot of multi-tools will have a chain tool on the multi-tool, so you could use that. Uh, a dedicated one is going to be a little bit easier to use. Uh, they're just a little bit easier to handle. Um, so uh, you have to have a chain breaker, most likely, um, uh, to get your chain off your bike and put the new one on. Now, something like this, the SRAM and KMC chains will have a master link. So while you don't need a chain tool to actually install the chain, um, you will need one to make it the right length. So most likely you're going to have to shorten your chain a little bit, and so that's why you're going to have to have a chain tool. This is something that I've made um, just out of uh, some metal, and it's not required, but it is helpful um, when you're putting the chain back on the bike. Um, to kind of pinch the chain together it just makes it easier to put the uh, chain or the master link on um, and I'll show you when I use that and then it's helpful to have some hand cleaner because your hands will get nasty when you do this uh, taking off the old chain um, I also recommend if you have them some disposable gloves I do not have any so I just have my hand cleaner ready and finally, it does help to have a work stand. It's definitely not required for this job. You can easily just put your bike on the ground and do it from there, uh, but a work stand is helpful. So just to demonstrate real quick how these work, um, there is a larger pen and a smaller pen, and um, that would go on the chain. So obviously the larger pen goes in the wider link, and the smaller pen goes in the more narrow one. Um, for this one, um, you just push down, and it'll give you a reading and like I said you can't really see it in the video but that's about 0 0.6, 0 0.65 and once it gets about there um, I will change my chain out. So I'm going to get the old chain off using my chain breaker since this is a Shimano chain that's on the bike so I have to use a chain breaker. If it's a KMC uh, you will have a master link as well as a SRAM. Now I've noticed the newer SRAM chains are very difficult to get the, the master link off. I don't know if they've redesigned those, um, so you may have trouble with the KMC or with a, a newer SRAM um, getting it off of the master link. Now, just as a tip here, there may be times when you want to remove a chain and then reinstall it. So, if you do that, you want to push the pin out just far enough so that it will. Uh, you can get the chain off, but it doesn't come out of that final plate on the outside. But what I'm going to do is, is just practice getting that off so that the pin will come out um, just far enough to get the chain off. So I've got the chain off, pulled it off the bicycle, and this is what I mean by getting the pin so it stays on the chain, but just far enough out so that you can get it off. Again, not required for this chain because I am going to dispose of this chain. Um, but if you were going to reinstall it, you would definitely want to just push the pin out that far and then stop. Once you have the old chain off, it's at this point that I would recommend cleaning your bike. If you don't have time to clean it, at the very least, put some rubbing alcohol, degreaser, mineral spirits, or something on a paper towel and get your front chain rings clean. And if you can kind of wipe down your, your cog as well, that would help. It's hard, kind of hard to do that with a paper towel unless you just kind of move it back and forth between the teeth. Um, but I usually plan to do this when I have time to clean the bike and usually when it's uh, actually time to clean it. This bike has not been cleaned in a couple months and I actually rode through some rain this morning. So I'm definitely going to clean it before I put the new chain on because you don't want to put a new chain on dirty chain rings and get it um, dirty immediately. 
All right, so I've cleaned the bike and I used the technique similar to the one I used in my bike cleaning video. Um, but I took a little extra time, pulled the wheels off and made sure I got the drivetrain really good before I put on this new chain. So the cogs and the chain rings are very clean. Now we're gonna measure the new chain. If you're doing this by removing an old chain, the easiest way to measure is to measure the new chain, obviously with the same length as the old one. So what I've done is I've just hung this over something and I've just kind of matched it up link for link. You can also maybe lay out some newspaper or something on the ground. I wouldn't put it right on the ground because new chains have a coating on it uh, to protect it while it's in its packaging. And that coating can really soak up a lot of dirt. So if you just lay it directly on the ground, it can get dirty. So lay out some newspaper or paper towels, or better yet, my, my favorite method is just to hang it over something. So I've matched it up link for link. Now, since the old chain did not use a master link, I've got to keep in mind that the new chain does have a master link. And so the master link is a wide link. And so what I've got to do is I've got to break the chain right here where I'm pointing. That way I have two narrow links and I can make room for the wide one. There's another way that you can measure a chain if you're going on a, uh, just a, installing a new chain without the old chain. Um, and I'll show you that here in a second. But don't th throw away your old chain yet because if you put the new chain on and the drivetrain has stretched out, then you, if you don't want to go ahead and change the cassette, you can put the old one back on and just keep running that for a little while longer. Um, or if you have a cassette on hand and um, you can install that, or if you just want to run down to the local bike shop, um, then you would have to do that. But I'll talk about that here at the end. So now let me show you how to measure a chain if you were just installing a new one um, without having the old one to reference. Another way that you can measure out your chain is to run it through the front derailleur, around your big ring in the front, and around the big cog in the back, and bypass the derailleur. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this together, and then we're going to uh, add two links. So where it connects, and then add two. So again, I've bypassed the rear derailleur, have it on the big chain ring in the front, big cog in the back, and where the chain comes together, I'm going to add two links. So it kind of meets right here. And then I'm going to add two whole links. So a small and a wide. So one, two. And then I would break the chain right here. So using the chain tool, I'm just going to push out the pin and break the chain. Again, if you want to practice getting that pin in the perfect position, with your chain tool, you can do that. Now that I have my chain the proper length, I'm gonna run it through the, the derailleur. What I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna shift down so the derailleur is all the way down to the smallest cog. It just makes it easier to put it through. And so I'm going to just run it around the pulley wheels in the back. And then we'll bring it together and we'll put either the master link in or the pin. And I'll explain that in a minute because Shimano uses a pin that you actually put through and then break. So I'm gonna bring the chain together. Okay, so I've got the chain around the small cog through the derailleur and I put it on the small ring in the front just to take tension out. And this is where I use that little tool that I fabricated. And some uh, multi-tools will actually come with one of these. Um, but this is one I made out of a coat hanger. Uh, so you can see that I've just got the chain so it, it pulls it together so I can put in my pen or master link real easily without having to you know push on the rear derailleur and get the tension out of the chain. Just makes it a lot easier. So if you're installing a new Shimano chain, it's going to have a little pin that you push through. And when you break the chain for a Shimano, since you're just using one pin, you've got to break it so that you have one narrow and then you would have one wide. This is a narrow, narrow because I'm going to put the master link in, but Shimano, you've got to break it so that you have a wide one and a narrow one. And then you would put uh, them together. You would push the pin through with your chain tool until it's flush with the link. 
and then you're, you're going to have another piece sticking out on the other side and you would use a pair of needle nose pliers or pliers or something to break that off and then once you have it broken off your chain is together but I'm going to install my master link so I'll put my master link on and one pin goes in one side and one pin goes in the other and it's a lot easier to do with this little device here holding the chain together and then I would just push in the pieces and then I would pull the chain and it's going to stretch out and, and um, pop that master link into place. Now what I found with these master links is it's hard to pull the chain and pop them in there so what I do is I rotate it so um, I'll, I'll pull this tool out and I'll rotate and I'll spin the pedals so that the chain is so the master link is up here at the top and then I put the bike on the ground I stand on the pedals and the tension of the chain will pop that master link into place and that's what I'm going to do now so I did put the bike on the ground, stood on the pedals, and the master link popped right into place. Now, if you did this with a Shimano, sometimes the link is a little stiff. So what you'd want to do is right where that new pin is, you would just take the chain and kind of just bend it back and forth, and then make sure the link is really smooth. Now, with a master link, you don't really have that issue, but with if you're installing it with a pin, um, you would. So. Um, you bend it back and forth, make sure it real, is real smooth. If it's not, just keep working that back and forth until it loosens up. Now what you want to do for the final step is just take a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and go over that, spin the chain, and just get that coating off. That coating is a dirt magnet, especially on a mountain bike. So what you want to do is just wipe that off because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of sediment in the chain uh, and that's going to cause it to wear faster. So take that coating off. Again, it's just a protective coating that's put on at the factory to keep the metal from corroding um, while it's sitting in a box. And so just get that off. And then what I will actually do, I'll actually put in an hour or two of riding on a chain before I lube it um, because it's still going to have some of that coating on the chain. And it's, you know, that, that'll lube it up enough, but just taking it off the outside as best you can is what you need to do. And then don't forget to lube it after about two hours of riding. So that's all there is to putting on a new chain on a bicycle. The absolute final step in this is I would recommend taking your bike out on the street and getting up to a normal speed that you typically ride in. So if it's on a road bike, it's probably 20, 21 miles an hour. So you have it in the gear that you most commonly use. Then do some sprints. Stand on the pedals really good and just make sure that chain doesn't skip in the back. If it skips, it's, you're going to feel it and it'll make a little noise on the rear cassette. And what that means is you waited a little bit too long to change out your chain. And at that point, you have two choices. You can either put the old one back on, keep riding it for a little while longer, or you can go ahead and get a new cassette and put the new cassette on. I would recommend doing the new cassette because if you wait too long with an old chain, you can also stretch out the front chain rings as well, and then the job gets even more expensive. So if you have any questions about this job, Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.